recently did a review on the get home bag. Uh, this is a miniaturized version of your bug out bag. It's something that you keep possibly in your vehicle at all times would really be the smartest way. But especially when I'm going on trips, uh, you know, for a couple of hours or so, I want to make sure that I have the essentials for that just in case. You know, one thing that you need to consider is just because you're having an SHTF, which I like to call personal SHTF, doesn't mean that it interrupts anything else going on in the world. <laughs> you know, there are times where things just go wrong. Now, I'm not going to get into the contents of the bag because we, we've already done that. Uh, and you can refer to that video. Of course, first I use the rule of threes as my guide. It just helps me to make sure that I have the essentials. And so that is one big plus for using that rule. But also having your regular EDC and having some good walking shoes, if nothing else. Uh, you know, a lot of times I run to the store, I'm in my flip-flops. You know, having a good pair of boots or walking shoes uh, in your vehicle just tucked away, you know, it just makes a world of difference if you're on your feet. And so actually being prepared, you know, even if you're just going for that little bit, things can happen. But two of the things that you need to definitely consider is number one, medical. Uh, having some trauma kit, having some kind of first aid, just in case and you should have that with you in your vehicle anyway um, especially those who are active who are out and about but a good medical kit is could happen at any time in between those rule of threes but also your self-defense option now that's where it gets a little bit critical and i'm going to throw a couple of things out here to you uh, number one uh, i have my concealed carry i carry a pistol wherever i go and, uh, you know, I have a couple extra magazines handy, and in my truck I have a couple extras. So guys, a lot of people think that, you know, they say, well, the Second Amendment's my concealed carry permit or whatever, and just don't get their concealed carry. Uh, one thing I want you to consider, I mentioned this during the, the get home bag, is that if you are pulled over, if you're arrested or something, especially if you kind of are on the lam a little bit uh, or trying to head home, if you get caught with a concealed carry, and you don't have a permit, it's going to be a problem. Uh, so just I highly recommend anyone getting their concealed carry permit. It just helps legitimize you carrying a firearm. Uh, but also one big issue is, and it's one of those that you have to kind of weigh out, is whether to carry a AR-15. I mean, I carry, like if I'm going down to Atlanta, it's a couple of hours away, I tuck an AR-15 pistol, take it away, and have it just in case. And so, you know, having an AR-15 pistol, though, walking down the street, even if it is a lot smaller, is still a problem uh, in certain situations. And so that is something to kind of weigh out. You know, do you, if you are in a situation where you have to abandon your vehicle, are you willing to leave that AR-15 pistol or that AK pistol or whatever you're using that's possibly a long gun as your truck gun, are you willing to leave it? Uh, that is something to consider. Now, if you want to carry it, are you able to carry it without drawing too much attention to you in a, just a regular situation, again, where it's your personal SHTF and everything else is going fine? There are different situations where you could possibly need a go bag. Uh, one is just for every day. Uh, you know, you could just be going along. I know a guy got in touch with me the other day and he said he has a 25-mile commute to work every day. And he lives in Colorado, and he said his drive is kind of open road. I mean, there is nothing for miles. And so, you know, and because of that, he had been planning on putting together a go bag, and he did uh, after watching one of the videos, uh, just having those essentials. And so if you're out where you can't get help or possibly could be a long time getting help, the bag is very important to have. Uh, also, environmental issues. If it snows, if you have tornadoes, you know, whatever. If you're in California, you have earthquakes, which those can happen, hurricanes or whatever. I mean, there's a lot of environmental things that could happen uh, that you could be separated from your vehicle, the vehicle damaged, uh, you have to walk. Uh, a few years ago, I had a guy get in touch with me. He was one of the students, and I believe it was down in Mississippi when the tornadoes came through there and just wrecked havoc over that area in the south. And he had told me he had put together a go bag a week or so before this tornado, this storm came. And so he was living with three other guys. He sent me video actually of this. And uh, has, he looked out the window vi videoing it and you could see this tornado heading right for their house. 
and uh, he lived in a small neighborhood. Well, they grabbed their bag, they all got in the middle of the house like they should have done, and the house was just destroyed. Trees laying through the house, then he videoed some of that. Uh, one thing that he told me was the bug out bag or the little go bag he had, he said we had to walk 12 miles because trees were laying all across the road. There was no way to get out. And he said the medical kit was the most important thing they needed. He goes, we helped a lot of people on the way. He said, but secondly, having that food and a little bit of water went a long way as well. And so, you know, guys, it doesn't have to be this SHTF situation for you to need a good go bag. Now, there are times where it is SHTF, and you need to definitely be able to get home. If you've read the Going Home series, <laughs> you know that having a good bag could be the difference between life and death, having those essentials. If you're watching this video, uh, you already realize the potential of an SHTF. But, you know, sometimes these things can arise quickly, just like some of the riots that have happened over the past couple of years. And I know I was watching on video this, it was right on this major interstate, I-85, which runs right through our town. And, uh, but it was up in Charlotte, and there were a lot of people blocking the road, and right there on the main highway. And trucks were stopped, cars were stopped, they were just sitting there. And then these people started going from car to car, demanding things, taking things, pulling people out of their vehicles. They got in the back of trucks and started pulling out the merchandise and lighting it on fire. <laughs> this is something that we never would have thought about three years ago. But in the future, these things could happen. You never know when something like this could spring up. You may have to abandon your vehicle. It may be lit on fire. You may have to walk. You know, it may be a larger area that's affected to where you really just can't get help. And so having a bag will get you at least take care of you for a while. Now, if it is a bug out situation, a lot of people just think, well, I'm going to jump in my vehicle and I'm going to go to a bug out location. Uh, I had a guy a while back, got in touch with me, said, hey, I've got all of our supplies. We've got everything we need. And it's down at a certain area about six hours away. So we don't really do a lot at home. But if anything ever happened, we're going to jump in our vehicles and we're going to drive down. And... Um, uh, you know, I told him, I said, look, I said, freeways can be clogged up. We were coming back from Indianapolis from NRA about three years ago, coming through um, Kentucky. And it was a gorge. There was no, I mean, there was nothing except just this gorge. It was a, kind of a national park area. And then it came down to a long bridge over this lake. Uh, we, there was some accident or something going on up ahead, and we were in gridlock. I mean, for almost two hours, just sitting there. Coming back from the NRA... Uh, annual meeting in Indy and um, you know we're just sitting there in traffic we were just talking about being in a bug out situation uh, this is in the middle of the Tennessee mountains and uh, we, we caught it on the way down through Kentucky in the other lane where it just went on for miles and miles of backed up traffic and it was just four guys on a bridge so you know in a bug out situation as you can see you can't really see I'll show you when I get a clear shot. But, you know, it's just a good ways out. And one of the things we were talking about is if you're really planning on a bug out location, you're, you feel the need to bug out because things have gotten to a certain point, so has a lot of other people. And this is just normal driving. <laughs> this isn't, you know, a catastrophic event. And so when you're heading, getting ready to plan a bug out location, it's something to really consider you could put your family out on the road to be very vulnerable. It would not be the area I'd want to have to leave, abandon my vehicle and have to uh, hump it with my bug out bag. No. For sure. Well, and then, you know, talking about, you know, at this point right now, somebody's up ahead clearing clearing this accident is what it is from what we've seen. Yeah, right now we're behaving ourselves in a single file line. Without rule of law, it would be total chaos out here. Yeah, you wouldn't know what, you wouldn't know what was going on ahead. Uh, people would try to be turning around. Both lanes would probably be packed. People going in different directions. People running out of gas. People running out of, that's a great idea. That's a great suggestion. Blocking or, the road. Blocking the road. And then. The vehicle breakdown's overheating. Somebody's pulled over right here. Yeah, somebody's already pulled over. Then you have uh, no law enforcement, no control over the interstate. So, you know, then you've got that to deal with, with people just doing whatever, no concern, for speeding, uh, people getting very aggressive. I mean, you know, we had a guy a minute ago come flying up behind me and he was acting like a moron. And then when he passed me, looked over, you know, 
which kind of made us all chuckle. But, you know, it was, it's just um, a bad situation. I mean, here we've got a church van. Bunch of kids sitting on the side of the road, broken down. Of course, I've been there before a number of times. <laughs> um, then you got people like this trying to get into the lane, trying to horn his way, which is fine. I'll let him in. I don't mind. But, you know, there's going to be other people that are going to not be so nice. And all this is speculation, but it's definitely something to consider. Just look at all the videos when people try to flee the beach before a hurricane, mm -hmm. the mass exodus. Imagine a failure at a power plant or a grid down situation or a natural disaster. Now, one thing that I found that was very interesting was a guy not too far from here had run off the road uh, and went down an embankment. Um, unfortunately, nobody saw him. Uh, it must have been in the evening at night. And so he went down to the embankment and he was there for three days. Unfortunately, he had a heart attack while he was down there and he passed away. And someone just happened to look down there after a couple of days and spotted his vehicle. Uh, you know, that is one thing. You could be trapped in your car. You could have some problems. You know, your car is just jammed up. There's not really any traffic. People are not stopping necessarily to help people as much as they used to. Um, I picked up a guy the other day you know, because he was out of gas. I could see his car. I could see him walking with a gas can. But, you know, sometimes people are not apt to help you. And so, you know, that is definitely something. In fact, a buddy of mine said he was driving from Charlotte, North Carolina, was going down the road and watched this car go flying off the road. It had been raining and it just got hydroplaned and it went flying off the road, went down into an embankment. He said that if he hadn't been watching that nobody would have seen it and you couldn't see the vehicle from the road. So again, guys, it's the little things, but those little things can happen in an instant. So here at the end of the video, I'm gonna give you a few tips of things to think about if you are on the road. Um, number one is have a good map, uh, not just necessarily your phone because your phone may, uh, you may lose it, you may have dropped it in water. I mean, there's a bazillion reasons why we can't totally rely on our phones even though they're great tools. Uh, and they have GPS and they can get us where we're going if they're working. So I always keep a map, uh, a regular print map in my bag. Sometimes they're difficult to find anymore, but uh, you can still get them. I know a lot of times at gas stations they'll have them. Uh, and so in my bug out bag, I have a really detailed map and it's actually the whole Southeast. I do have some more local maps as well. And those are important to have with a compass. And that way you can kind of track. Now, if you're going along a main road, you kind of know where you're going. You know, you can kind of go along that road. But here are some tips with that. Number one, stay alert. Uh, don't just be off the side of your road and start rummaging through your bag. Uh, you could instantly be a victim in a hurry. You could be attacked. Uh, and you need to be able to be aware of your surroundings. Make sure you get into an area where you feel pretty safe and that you could see something coming. If you were preoccupied in your bag or on your phone, you could be on your phone, messing around, texting, getting your GPS coordinates, whatever it is. So number one is situational awareness. Just be aware of your surroundings and know what's going on. Number two, get off the road as far as you can. Um, you know, if you're off the road, uh, you know, you're not in that main area. Most people will just walk. They take the path of least resistance and they'll go right through that area. And so get side off the road as far as you can. Uh, and there's a number of reasons to do that. Of course, number one is not to be picked out, but also number two is you may be hit by a vehicle. Uh, you know, a car could come, slide, whatever. I mean, people have been hit. A lot of state troopers have been hit while giving tickets. So people a lot of times are not paying attention and with all the people texting, it's very dangerous. Another thing is, is just vandalism where people are throwing things out of their window at people walking. And that has happened so many times. And I know a lot of guys, especially when they're on their mopeds, you know, somebody will throw out a two liter Pepsi bottle and knock them down. Uh, and it's just crazy what people will do. So get off the road. Now, one problem is you may run into some private property if you get too far off, but at least be able to kind of see and use the road as your guide, but do it from a distance. Another thing too is that would, if you can, is to travel at, in the evening at night. Now, when it's dark, uh, I know it's gonna be a little more difficult to travel, but that way you're not spotted from a distance and it makes it a little bit easier going. Uh, now that may not be practical for the area you are. In all of these things, you have to kind of weigh out what is practical 
of your situation. But the big thing is, and the one thing I always like to do, is to get you to think about some things. Uh, most people will just be standing around and just looking around and waiting for help. And help may not be coming. So, guys, you be prepared. Get your bag together. Uh, have the essentials that can get you home because that is the number one goal, is getting you home safe and sound. Be strong. Be of good courage. God bless America. Long live the Republic. Now guys, on an ending note, uh, I know these things don't happen every day and some of you will never happen in your lifetime. But because these videos get sometimes up to 100, 200,000 views, someone will contact me and say, this happened to me and because I watched your video, I was prepared. This happens all the time. So however many people watch this video, there is a really good chance that maybe you won't face that situation, but someone watching this video will face this situation. And a lot of it is just open road, wilderness, wilderness, blah, blah, blah.